Hey guys, how is everybody doing? We have come to an end to the Christopher Nolan filmography. I have reviewed all 11 of his movies. I have not reviewed Oppenheimer. I did a little first reaction quick review. Just watch that and you'll get my short thoughts. Other than that, I have reviewed basically every single Christopher Nolan movie. And with that all being said, here's my own personal ranking of all 12 Christopher Nolan movies. Make this clear, this is not a definitive list, this is my personal ranking. Please do not leave me comments that I should go kill myself or I should have never been born. Don't three don't send death threats to me or my mother. How about you just give me your own personal ranking down in the comments below instead of just ranting on my own personal ranking. But with that being said and now out of the way, let's begin. I'm also just going to say this right off the bat. I do not think that Christopher Nolan has directed one single bad movie. Every movie he's directed I think is very rewatchable or at least enjoyable. Every movie that he's made I can see myself rewatching, but not every movie by all means. But with that being said, coming in at number 12... It's going to be Dunkirk. Now, a lot of people would put his first movie at the bottom, which I would understand, which I'll get to soon. But Dunkirk, it just did not work for me. This should have worked for me because I love the war subgenre. I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of it, but I do like it where you got movies like Hacksaw Ridge, Braveheart, my favorite, Saving Private Ryan, which Saving Private Ryan is in my top 10 favorite movies of all time. And when I found out that Christopher Nolan directed a movie about World War II, and which is a movie franchise basically about World War II that I'm basically in love with, in love with, and I love learning more about it, and then you got Christopher Nolan, which is one of my favorite directors of all time, and then you put them together, that basically just sounds like Christmas came early, basically. But when I watched it, I was very disappointed. Now, if you love this movie, that's great. I'm glad you loved it. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm glad that you enjoy this movie, at least. But it just did not work for me. I do think there are a lot of cool things about this movie, where my favorite part about this movie is where you got to see the both, um, the both, um, uh, like, per, uh, God, what's the word I'm looking for right now, actually? Um, view the view of the land the sky and the sea where you got tom hardy's character which he doesn't have a name and he is the person where you get to see everything that's going on in the air and he's shooting down planes and then you got the land where everybody's waiting for help and they're getting shot at they have to defend themselves and then you got the sea where people are on the scene and then you got killigan murphy's character telling them to turn back because if they go to dunkirk and they're basically all fucked and I like that. That's probably my favorite part of the movie, and where you got to see the both view, all three views of these uh, places. But there's like no main character here. <laughs> I don't know who the fuck to root for, but it's it's just not for me. It's my least favorite Christopher Nolan movie. I'm glad that you loved it. I'm glad this is one of your favorite movies, if it is. But again, it just didn't work for me. At number 11, which is actually Christopher Nolan's first ever movie, and that is Following. Following is a, is a very interesting film where you get this character where he'll break into people's houses and he won't steal anything, he won't rob anything, but he'll put stuff in there to mess with people's relationships or just to mess with their lives. That's a pretty cool, interesting subject. I really like that. I feel that the story that Christopher Nolan tells here is very cool. I love the black and white feeling of this movie, but let's all be clear. By all the other filmography that he's done, this is basically his weakest. It's not his best film. Uh, it's not his best filmmaking ever, but I feel I respect this movie more because of all the things that he was able to do, especially with the low budget that he had, and he only made this movie from friends when they had time to spare. And for this being his first movie, he does a damn good job uh, for it being his first ever movie, but uh, throughout his filmography, it gets better, and then there's also this, like, twist in this movie that I won't spoil for you, and uh, it's supposed to be like, oh, so that's the twist? Cool. 
cool. Like, I kind of forgot about it. I was like, wait, there's a there's supposed to be a twist in this movie? It doesn't come out like it's supposed to be this huge shocking thing, unlike the rest of his filmography. But to me, Christopher Nolan's writing, directing, and just casting, it does get better throughout his filmography for sure. But out of all of them, I probably wouldn't rewatch this, but I would rather rewatch this over Dunkirk. But that's just my opinion. And at number 10 is Tenet. <laughs> Tenet is a very cool subject. I think that the concept of Tenet is very cool. But it's confusing. This movie is fucking confusing. We're from beginning to fucking end. I was like, what is going on here? What the fuck are we talking about? Uh, what What's life? <laughs> It's fine. I enjoy it, especially the cast. I love the action in this movie. Those two things really saved this movie for me. I feel if the action or the cast wasn't great, I think this might have gone down like a spot or two. But I really like this movie. It's a very cool movie. I really enjoyed it. I loved for what it tried to be. For this movie being a 2020, which had like no movies and we really only got like three or four maybe, I would put this in my top too, I guess. This probably was my second favorite of that year, of all the movies I saw, I guess. I enjoyed this movie for what it is, especially for the time it came out. It's basically like, holy shit, we got a movie in 2020? Oh. Eh, it's better than nothing. Basically, what saves this movie, too, is that out of the few movies we got last year, this basically saved that year. But this movie's okay, but it's basically Inception. This movie is Inception from beginning to fucking end. I'm not joking. The entire subject, the entire thing, it's just like, this is just Inception. When you binge watch all of Christopher Nolan's movies, and then you get to this movie before watching Oppenheimer, or after, you're like, that was basically Inception. Like, the second the movie's over, you're like, oh, that was just, Incep that was just Inception, but it was a cool movie. I love the choreography in this movie, too. I think that's pretty cool. Like, the scene where they're, like, jumping off the roof and all that and all. And, like, the like the, like the whole spy feeling thing of it, I think is pretty cool. But the movie's fun, it's, but it's confusing, and it's very familiar. Coming in at number nine is Insomnia. Insomnia is a movie that doesn't get talked about too much because it's probably Christopher Nolan's lesser-known movie. I don't understand that. I don't think it's that very forgettable. But I like this movie. Now, I feel what doesn't, what makes this movie go down this low, which I still like. Basically, from here on out, I would, I would tell you to go buy all of these movies. But this movie is just not original. Now, Christopher Nolan's movies, every movie he's made is basically original. But this is actually a remake of a 1990 movie or something like that, 1980. It has the guy from Thor in it. That's all I know. I haven't seen that much of it. I've seen like some of it. And I was like, okay, I'm not watching this. And that's probably my issue is that it's just, it's a, it's a story that's already been told. That's my problem with remakes is that it's a story that's already been told. Now, I don't think I said that in my review where I didn't know too much that it was a remake. I think I knew. I can't remember. I'll put a card up here so you can watch that. But I rather knew it was a remake when I re when I reviewed it, or I just found out after I was done reviewing it. But when I found that out, I was like, okay, this movie's cool, but it's just not original. And I seen some of the original, but I couldn't really find it really anywhere. And uh, I like this movie. What really saves it is Al Pacino and Robin Williams. I do like the story. I love how it catches the insomnia feeling. Where insomnia is where you lose lack of sleep. And then you get Al Pacino's character is losing lack of sleep. Because he's in Alaska. And the sun never goes down there. And where you get this cool story where Al Pacino is a cop. And he goes to Alaska to find Robin Williams' character, who is supposedly to be a murderer. I am not spoil the ending for you if you have not seen this movie. Go watch it for yourself. And his uh, partner is threatening to turn him in to make him lose his job. I can't remember what, what it was uh, right now. And throughout the and when they're trying when they find Robin Williams' character where he's hiding out and they try to take him out, and they're in this like foggy haze and everything. And Al Pacino's character, who is a cop. He sees his partner in the fog, but he doesn't know it's his partner. He believes it's Robin Williams' character, as we think. 
and he shoots his and he shoots him and he goes over and finds out it's his partner and he dies. And what I love about this movie, it makes you go like did Al Pacino kill him on purpose because he was going to turn him in for something? Or did he accidentally shoot him? And throughout this entire movie, it's like, it makes you think, like, did he or didn't he? I like that. That's a very cool story and a very cool concept. But none of these side characters are very interesting. All the side characters are kind of just there, just to do cop stuff and kind of, like, uh, be suspicious on Al Pacino and all that. It's just, like, they're like, okay, okay. If you wrote them better, maybe this would have gone up a lot higher, and if this was an original story, this might be in my top five. But, I would rewatch this. This is a very cool movie. I, w I would, in fact, recommend it. At number eight. This, might, this one might give me a trouble. Interstellar. Interstellar is a very emotional movie. This is probably the most emotional movie on this entire list. Out of all these movies, it's probably the most emotional. And if you watched my review, you saw that I cried a little bit during that review because it's fucking sad, dude. I really like this movie. You got this great concept where this man has to choose because he's a scientist. He's a basically a genius and he knows all about time and space. And he finds out where NASA is basically hiding out. And it's this is basically a suicide mission where they have to go on this mission to save the all of humanity. And... The Matthew McConaughey's character, who should have won the Oscar for this movie. Uh, this is when Matthew McConaughey, basically every movie he was in, it was just like, brilliant, great actor, more Oscars! And um, this entire movie, it's very emotional. Please just watch the movie for yourself. It's free on Prime and on Paramount+. Plus. Watch the movie, for fuck's sake. And this entire movie is where he has to choose. Save all of humanity... Or sacrifice himself and just abandon his children. Where he has to abandon his children to save humanity. Or die with his children and let all of humanity die. And he has to choose. And he chooses to abandon his children and save all of humanity. He doesn't abandon them. He goes, he goes on this mission to save his children and all of humanity. And it's a very sad movie. My The most emotional sequence ever put on screen, one of, if anything, is where they go through the black hole and they have to go through all these different uh, times and, uh, like, all these different worlds. It's, like, ten minutes, like, ten minutes or something like that? Ten minutes here is, like, twenty years in the real world where he can lose... Two decades just spending ten minutes in that in that area, and if they fuck up, they basically just killed all of humanity, and they never and they might be in the future by the time they get back. And when they find out that they've been gone for twenty three years, twenty three years, Matthew McConaughey goes into this room, and he sits down and he watches twenty years worth of footage of his children, where his son graduates, he gets married, and has his child and has his own child, and Matthew McConaughey just his he doesn't say a word, he just sits there and just in his emotions and his facial features and his tears where he seems so happy, he's excited that his son is moving on through life, but he's devastated that he was never there for him, that he wasn't there to help him out. It's a very emotional sequence. Oh god, I'm gonna pull it together, Tanner. It's a very emotional sequence, and just that is Oscar-worthy. And people say that Christopher Nolan is an emotionless director. I call bullshit. Watch this movie and tell me that you didn't cry. I cried when I watched this movie. I was like, people saying and Christopher Nolan's an emotional director, emotionless director. Watch this goddamn movie and prove me wrong. Number seven. These next few might get me in trouble. Is Batman Begins. To me, this is my least favorite of the Dark Knight trilogy. That's not saying much. The Dark Knight trilogy is a flawless comic book trilogy. Might be my favorite. Might be my favorite. It might, if it's not, it's up there. Batman Begins is a great origin story. You get a great cast. You get a great characters. You get, it's a Batman movie. What else do you want from a Batman movie? The only thing that I don't like about this movie, and it's like, it's there. Is that Batman leaves Ra's al Ghul to die. 
Now, I'm I'm defending where he didn't actually kill him. He just left him there to die. But at the same time, he basically left him to die. Other than that, it's a flawless comic book movie. And the one I'm about to talk, to, uh, talk about soon, this and that, basically changed the comic book genre. I gotta get hate. I gotta get ready for all the hate comments. Do you hear the keyboards? I hear the keyboards. Number six is the Dark Knight. Look, I understand if this is your favorite movie of all time, your favorite comic book movie of all time, and I wouldn't argue with you if you said that this is the greatest comic book of movie of all time. But it's not mine. <laughs> it's not my favorite comic book movie of all time. It's up there, it's in my top five, I'm pretty sure, but... There's nothing about this movie that nobody's already said. You got a great performance by Heath Ledger, which is gonna go down in history as one of the best performances in history, and one of the best comic book uh, performances in history. Probably the best comic book performance of all time, really. And... It's a great movie. I love the the whole like theme of like crime and like no rules around the city. I love the new Batman suit. I love Aaron Eckhart as Two Face, which a lot of people don't talk about, which is a a bummer. It's like, well, what the fuck? Like, why don't you guys talk about him? Yeah, Heath Ledger's great, but talk about this motherfucker. He's great. I love this movie. It's a great comic book movie. It's one of my favorite movies of all time, but. If this, back, if I made this ranking back, like, four years ago, this might have been, like, my number five, or number three, if that. But, the only thing that I don't really care for in this movie is really that in the ending of this movie, you get, uh, where Batman kills Harvey Dent because he was saving Gordon's, uh, son, but in the end of the movie, uh, they because they talk about how Kirby killed five people and two of them were cops, by the way. And he's like, tell them I did it. I'm the one who killed those people. I killed every tent. Send all the people after me. And I was like, bitch. <laughs> people die every day in fucking Gotham. And every day in fucking New York City. And you think of a city of basically half the fucking population. You think that all those people in that fucking city are gonna go up to you and be like, I demand to know who killed these five people. The Joker did it. Say the fucking Joker did it. I understand it's leading up to The Dark Knight Rises, which you will see very high up on this list. If you just said that the Joker did it, <laughs> then this would have fucking never happened. I understand, at least in the next movie, but it's like, dude, what the fuck are we doing? Just say the Joker killed him. You didn't have to say that bullshit. <laughs> and I also didn't care for that they recasted Katie Holmes. The person that they get, I can't remember her name off the top of my mind. She does find what she's given, but out of all the por before, blah, 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 the performances in this movie, it's just... Meh. Like, I almost put Batman Begins over this. I'm not gonna lie. Because Batman Begins is a Batman movie. This is Joker's movie. And a matter of fact, this is actually my dad's favorite movie. He'll argue with you. And I go up to him like, what do you like besides Heath Ledger's Joker in the Dark Knight? He actually went, uh, yeah. And you want to know what else really hangs this back? Do you ever have a time where you absolutely adore a movie and you love a movie to death for so many years? But then, when you hear so many people talk about it, you hear so many people praise it, and they basically treat it, it's better than their child. There's always, oh, there's only one movie that's done to me. That's always done that to me. And that is The Dark Knight. This movie is very overrated in my mind, but it's an absolutely, it's an absolutely great movie. I love this movie. It's in my top 50 favorite movies of all time if that it's in my top 10 favorite comic book movies of all time but to me it's just it's a little bit overrated five baby now i'm gonna say this now these top five were fucking difficult to choose from but i finally settled on a top five it took me a few hours <laughs> i had to rewatch some of these movies too but, my number five 
is The Prestige. I fucking love this movie. I fucking hate myself for not watching this movie three years ago. Because if I watched this movie three years ago, it might be two spots up higher. But, I love this movie. It's a flawless movie. I have nothing to hold up against it. And I actually watched some review reviewers saying that the only thing that I didn't care for is the characters. And I'm like, you're not supposed to like the characters. These characters are doing a battle of, of wills where one and the other are trying to basically butt heads to prove to each other who is the better magician. That is the entire movie. You're not supposed to love these characters. You're supposed to despise both of them. But at the same time, you're going, I want this guy to, to win. But at the same time, I want this him to win. I want to see who comes up on top. Especially at the ending. I'm not going to spoil it here. I on At the end of my uh, review of The Prestige, I did like a whole like segment where I talked about um, the ending of the, of the movie, which is one of the best endings to a movie ever in my mind. I love this movie. I love the the whole themes of sacrifice and obsession, where you got Christian Bale's uh, Christian Bale's character who's a who's a who's the theme of obsession. And then you got Hugh Jackman who is willing to sacrifice. No wait, no, I got the other I got the other way around. Uh, Hugh Jackman's obsession and Christian Bale's sacrifice. I love that whole theme. This movie is fantastic. I love how it's like a magician movie, and where they're both at each other like. Who's the better magician? And, like, so much is going on and all that. Where so much depression in this movie, by the way. Christian Bale's care, uh, hus husband? Um, uh, wife in this movie hangs herself because she knows well, who he is. And then she hangs herself. He's like, Whoa, okay, buddy, buddy. Things went from zero to a hundred really fucking quick. Like, I, when that scene happened, I was like, Dude, what the fuck? Things went from five to a hundred, like, fucking that dude it's an awesome movie if you don't love this movie what the fuck is wrong with you i'm looking at you sean chandler yeah i watched your ranking i love this movie it's a fantastic movie it's a flawless movie and it's awesome i love this movie and some people say it's not flawless that's all i gotta say four is christopher nolan's first um uh, like first uh product no, yeah, production company deal, and that's Memento. This was this was actually his second movie. Now, when I first did my review on this movie, I said that this movie is way too complicated, and I've actually recently changed my mind on that. Where I I'm watching it now, and I'm going, I actually had to rewatch this a few nights ago, and I went, it's not really complicated. Well, when you when it's on first rewatch. Yeah, it's a little confusing, like, okay, I gotta put this here and there. But when you watch it for a second time, you're like, oh, it's not that confusing. And I will admit, this movie does have great rewatch value, but this movie's awesome. I love the whole thing where the character, Leonard, he has, like, Alzheimer's in a way, where he has memory loss, where he can, won't even remember how the conversation will, will, has began sometimes. And I love that subject, and then you kind of see his point of view throughout the entire movie, where... Things are here and there, and he's kind of, like, figuring stuff out, like, how on, like, his chest, like, right here, basically, it says that John G. murdered and raped my wife and all that, and it's, like, backwards, and when he has to look in a mirror, that's the only way he can read it and all that. He has tattoos all over him, so he can remember stuff like Fact 1, Fact 2, Fact 3, Fact 4, and all that. I love this movie. It's a great story. It's a great concept where you see the the point of view of the character, which very few movies do that, where it's like, oh, um, here's the point of view of the character, you get to live his life, basically. I love that. This That is a great concept, it's a great character, you got great actors in here, you got, uh, Guy Pierce, uh, Jay Leno, or something like that. Uh, yeah, you got, uh, Joe Pilato, Jesus, Jay Leno, Joe Pilato. And uh, whatever that girl's name was, I forget her name. She's a likable character, too, and I've seen a lot of people... Uh, kind of, like, complain how, like, there's, like, a relationship thing going on and that they don't really know if they're actually, like, having sex or something. And I was like, it's never really bothered me. I think it's kind of obvious that they're just kind of, like, friends and working together, really, if anything. And they try to suggest that they probably had sex with each other, which I, I don't buy. I love this movie. It's a great concept, great characters. It's all you need in a movie. You thought my top five were hard to decide? <laughs> it's nothing compared to my top three. 
My top three, man. It, by the time Christopher Nolan makes another movie, all these top three, top five movies might flip-flop. But, as of right now, my number three is the new kid on the block, Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer is close to being my favorite movie of the year. I That's how good this movie is. This is a flawless movie in my mind. It's a great movie. You got a great con. You got a great story of like showing how the atomic bomb to end World War II happened. You got gr you got a great biopic, which I'm not really into that much. But when you get a great director like Christopher Nolan, that you know it's gonna be good. Like that's the only reason I really went to watch this movie. At first, I just like I don't care how they really made the bomb. But when I saw Christopher Nolan was attached, I was like, oh fuck, I gotta go see this movie. And let me tell you. This is the first star rating movie I went to by myself, and what an experience. Like, my speakers at my theater aren't usually way too loud, but when it comes to big blockbusters like this and, like, Top Gun Maverick and Mission Impossible, it was fucking loud. Like, that whole scene, like, what one of my favorite moments of this movie is when they finally set off the bomb, and there's, like, no noise. Like, it just goes... And all you hear for, like, a, like three minutes is just is Oppenheimer's breathing goes and then what I love about that scene in particular is like his breathing is like a motion like you kind of like like the way he's breathing is like oh god is this gonna work did I just kill all of humanity or is it like and he's like did I just kill all of humanity or am I saving the world right now it's a very cool scene and then when you finally hear that big boom it's like holy shit and I actually saw a lot of people complain about there's like like they couldn't hear the dialogue. I can hear the dialogue. What the fuck kind of movie do you have? You're probably theater. Yours is shit, basically. If you can't hear it, it's a flawless movie. I love what they did with this movie and the cast, especially Killigan Murphy and Robert Downey Jr. Better win the fucking Oscars this year. If they don't, I'm never watching the Oscars again. Killigan Murphy, he better win best uh best actor this year. If he doesn't, I'm gonna fucking punch somebody. And if Robert Downey Jr. doesn't win best supporting actor, I will punch I will punch who, whoever fucking says that this the other person won it. I will go there. I will fucking beat the shit out of him. If it's a girl, I'm not gonna do that. But if it's a dude, I'm gonna fucking I'm gonna beat him. Be like Robert Downey Jr. deserves it. That whole ending scene, like it. I went to watch it like again this weekend. It ran chills down my fucking spine. Like, if you haven't seen the movie, spoilers, where he just goes, you remember when I brought you those calculations where we thought we would start a chain reaction that would destroy the entire world? And then Albert Einstein, who's actually in this movie, he goes, I remember it well. What of it? And then he just goes, I believe we did. And it's like, holy shit, that got my boner to rise. Number two. God damn it, it took me a while to come up with my top three, like I said. My number one and number two, they flip-flopped. But right now, my number two is Inception. Holy shit, how do you come up with a subject like this? Like, what the fuck? Like, was he on crack? Was Christopher Nolan on crack when he made this movie? I imagine he was. I bet he was. Uh, uh, excuse me. It's, this is a great movie. Even if you took out just, like, the high scene of the, uh, like, the hot, the heist part of the, this movie, this would be great. This would basically just be an already great movie. I loved this movie. I would not argue with you if this is your favorite Christopher Nolan movie. If you said that, I'd be like, I don't have to yell at you, because this movie's fucking awesome. I love fucking Inception. I, I think this might have been a first time watch for me. I might have watched it. I can't remember. Great movie. Great concept, you got great characters, and you got an awesome cast, and and I love the action sequences in this movie. A lot of people complained about the Dark Knight, and then when they watched this movie, they were like, how the fuck does this guy not know how to write action? I was like, the action's fine in the Dark Knight, what's wrong with you? Like, that whole scene where that where the guy who plays Robin in Dark Knight Rises, like, that whole, like, sequence, like, in the hallway, fighting that guard where... Where he shoots at him, but the bullet goes this way because they're in a van and they're like falling into water. But like he has to like run on on the walls to kind of and like kind of tilt in a way. And then when he shoots at him, the bullet goes that way and all that. When he's like aiming like right here, but the bullet goes that way. It's an awesome. That's a, that's that scene is just awesome. Awesome movie, awesome action, great cast, very great characters. And to this day, to this day, right now, I still have my ending theory. 
And it's kind of weird that people are still talking about it, when I feel it's kind of obvious. But, if you have not seen this movie, do yourself a favor. Watch the goddamn movie. My number one, my favorite Christopher Nolan movie, is The Dark Knight Rises. I know, I know, I know, The Dark Knight is way better, you need to go kill yourself, don't make ever make videos ever again. I get it. I don't understand the hate for this movie. I never will. And all these fucking negas people have, like how the fucking a little girl climb out of a fucking hole and a grown man can't, I'm like, dude, what the fuck is wrong with you? That is the child of Raz al Ghul. Did you not pay attention? The child of Raz al Ghul. Tom Hardy's main, him and Heath Ledger, man, they go fucking like this every day for me, or if you ask me today, ask me tomorrow, I'll be like, oh, Heath Ledger's better, oh, Tom Hardy's close, at least. I love the fucking Dark Knight Rises. It's my favorite comic book movie of all time. If not, it's, like, number two, at least. It's my favorite Batman movie. It's my favorite story. Oh, God. Saying it's my favorite Batman movie. I do not understand the hate for it. I never will. It's one of my favorite movies of all time, and if you disagree with me, then, sorry, but I don't know what else to tell you. It's, again, my list. It's my list, man. I'm sorry if you don't agree with me on The Dark Knight Rises, but, with that being said, Dark Knight Rises is my number one. Thanks so much for watching this 32-minute <laughs> video. I'm sorry I made you sit through all of this, but there's 12 movies to talk about, so it's going to be a long ride. But thank you all so much for watching. Please leave me your own ranking of all 12 Christopher Nolan movies. If you have seen, in fact, all of them. If you haven't, that's okay. But thank you all so much for watching. And if you like this video, like it. If you love to subscribe, hit the bell notification so you will get notified for my latest videos. But of course, until my next, my next video, see you then.